Welcome to another conversation of Lessons with Langford. This is a conversation about government and about history and about what makes us unique as a nation and what makes us so special that we've worked so hard to be able to protect this type of government. Lots of people complain about government. Lots of people say, I wish government was different or better or faster or smarter or more efficient or didn't spend so much or didn't tax so much or did more. But the question is, what puts our government together? Who is government? And how do you know if you complain about government, who you're really even complaining about or who you complain to? Well, it's interesting if we go all the way back to the very beginning in 1776 on July the 4th, what we know as Independence Day, that was the day that they released out the Declaration of Independence. I stood and read it, read the document to everyone, and so everyone could get a chance to be able to hear it. They sent off a copy to England and said to good King George, we're going to be independent. But you ask the question, who was that that was actually writing that? Well, in the very beginning in our Declaration of Independence, this is how it starts. It begins with this declaration, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the law of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to separation. Then they said, we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. They're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then they continued on from there. It was this declaration from us. It was this unique statement to say, we are doing this together to be able to tell to King George, we are going to be a separate people. Then 11 years later, when they wrote the United States Constitution, back in that same room in same place, when they came back there again, they started the United States Constitution saying, we're going to form a new government. And it began with this. Our Constitution begins first with we, the people of the United States. You see, when we complain about government and we argue about what government should do and shouldn't do and how it's doing, we're really talking about us. Because in our government, government is we, the people. Representative republic is what they call us. Now, some people you'll hear will say we're a democracy. Well, we're not a democracy, actually. A democracy is everyone in a whole area gets one vote, and you all get a chance to be able to say that one vote, and then you count up all the votes, and that does it. <clears throat> That's not what we do. We're a representative republic. We all select, we all have one vote, and we select someone to go vote for us. <clears throat> I serve in the United States Senate. I've been selected by the 4 million people of the state of Oklahoma, and I represent all 4 million of those people. Now I have to make decisions on a day-to-day -day basis with the perspective of 4 million people that are back home. Even though I'm here in Washington, I have to think about the people at home because I represent their vote. Now there are times that lots of people will call me or will email me or will contact me in some way by a letter or something. Well, I'm taking in their opinions, but at the end of the day, I have the responsibility to be able to represent their vote. Not all 4 million people get to decide every single issue that we deal with as a nation. We have 330 million people in the entire country. Not everyone votes on every single issue every time because I am one person and I represent a lot of people. It's a representative republic and each of us votes to be able to send that representative on. Now you may think that's kind of odd, but honestly, a lot of families do that all the time. Brothers and sisters, when they've got an argument or a disagreement with their mom or dad, They'll usually look at one sibling in particular and say, you go carry the message to mom or dad for us, and we'll all just stand there with you, but you're the one that should actually talk. That happens sometimes with a teacher at school. It's like, we have a disagreement. We want this to be different. You gripe about it, gripe about it, gripe about it. Then it's eventually everybody kind of pushes one person and says, you go share this with them, and we'll see if uh, what happens to you on that. Honestly, that's how our system works in a representative republic. We all gather and we choose one person and then we send them out to be able to go share our values and to be able to share our ideas. Now, the challenge is we don't all think alike. Now, just think about it. If I said everyone at your school thinks the same about every issue, you would say, no, they don't. Not everybody thinks the same about every issue. If I said everyone in your town thinks the same about every single issue, you would say, no, we don't. We have diversity of opinion. People like different kinds of music. People like different kinds of clothes. People like different types of food. 
Well, that's great. That's the diversity of opinion and of ideas. We have the same thing. Some people that live in small towns think differently sometimes than some folks that live in big towns. People that live in an urban area think differently sometimes than people live in a suburban area. We have diversity of opinion, but we're all Oklahomans and we're all Americans. So then the big challenge is, how do we grab all this diversity and all these different ideas and preferences and put them all into one thing, that is making law? Well, the interesting thing is, in the United States Senate, there are 100, rep there are 100 senators. Those senators all represent people from their own state. People in Maine, in New York, in Oregon, do think different than a lot of Oklahomans think. People that live along the beach and along the sea think differently about the oceans than what we think about lakes and about wide open prairies. People that live in the mountains think a little bit differently about logging and timber than people that live in open spaces. We all have differences of opinion and different decisions that we want to make, but we've got to be able to pull them together. So this is what we decided in our constitution. We decided that there would be two senators from every state. There'd be representatives in the House of Representatives, many more than there are senators, to represent each section of people from the country, and that together we would share the voices and ideas. Do we all agree on every issue? No, we sure don't. There are lots of times there are arguments, because I find sometimes people from other states do think differently than people in Oklahoma think, and different than I think on things. But we've got to be able to work out our differences, because the ideas that they have are important, and the ideas that I have and we have are important as well. And we've got to find a way to find what I call common ground. That is diverse perspectives, diverse background, diverse people with different kind of ideas on things have got to be able to sit down and to be able to get past our differences and find where are we the same? What do we agree on? That's how we make law in America. Because there's not one person saying, I choose this and everybody's got to do what I think no matter what. We choose the representatives. Those representatives then go actually work to be able to find common ground with other representatives and to say, people in New York may think different about this than people in Oklahoma think, but there are probably areas where we agree on. And let's try to find as many of those as we can. Now, sometimes do laws pass of areas that I don't agree on? Sure. There's times that there'll be 80% of a bill that I really agree on and 20% of it I really don't agree on. Then I've got to decide as Oklahoma's representative, as the senator for our state, to be able to say, what do I think about that? Do I think that 20% is so bad that I've got to be able to set that aside and say, we'll do none of it? Or do I think that 20% is a uh, difference of opinion on things and that's somebody from New York or from Michigan or from California that thinks that and just like I've got to have some things that they're going to disagree on uh, because I think of an Oklahoma way that I've got to be able to say sometimes a California way has got to be able to get in as well. And we try to find a way to be able to take diverse perspectives from a diverse background and to be able to put them all together to be able to make law. That's the way our system is set up. It's set up in such a way that every voice is heard, that every person matters in the process, and that every state and every district matters. Where does it begin? It begins with each of us. There's nothing different about me than there is about you. I didn't grow up in a political family. I didn't grow up with great wealth. I didn't grow up with some family that everyone knew their name or something. That's not who I am. I worked for 20 years with students as a youth pastor. That's what I did before. And then I really felt a sense of calling to be able to go in and to be able to run for office and to be able to be elected to office and then to be able to serve the people in my state in a different way. I'm still serving the people in my state, but I'm still just James. And when I leave this position one day, I'll still be just James at that point for me and for my family because I'm just an Oklahoman and just finding a way to be able to serve other people. You're no different in that. If you want to be able to step out and to be able to serve our nation and our community one day by being elected onto the school board or onto the city council or onto a county commission or onto our state legislator that deals with our state laws or onto a federal legislation that deals with federal laws or to run for the president of the United States, you could do that because our government is not set up for special families from special places to represent us. We're not like that. Other countries are. We are we the people. Any person can represent our state. Any person can serve their neighbors through public service. So I challenge you, find a way to be able to serve your neighbors. Find a way to be able to listen to someone who has a different perspective, a different background that is diverse from you. Find a way to be able to listen to them 
and listen to the ideas and the places where you agree and think if the two of us that may disagree strongly about some things were to actually get together and talk about the areas where we agree, could we find some areas of common ground and to say that's what we need to be able to agree on together and move on those things. That's who we are as Americans. We the people. We have a constitution that gives the power to all of us. And here's my one big challenge to you. As you think about what you will do now to be able to serve the people around you and to listen to diverse opinions, also think about what you'll do in the future and how you'll be wise with the power that you've been given to vote. Each person, when they turn 18 years old, are given the power and the responsibility, but still the choice to be able to vote. No one in America makes you vote. And even for those that vote, no one makes you vote a certain way. You get to choose how you vote and you step into a voting booth and you vote by yourself and no one else sees it, but that's great power because you are choosing who will represent all of us. And I encourage you to be wise with that power. Do your research, find out what they believe, find out who your neighbors are that are actually running for office on different things. And as you do that background and as you do that research, you are doing our most basic constitutional responsibility. We, the people, are choosing representatives to share our values, to work out our differences with each other and to be able to make laws in the days ahead. Don't forget, when you gripe about government or when you say government should do more things, that's actually us. There's nothing different about people in government than there are everybody else and every other citizen. It's we, the people. So it's time we step up, express our voices, take responsibility for the way that we vote and also learn as many of these issues as we can. Be an influence on those folks that represent us because we are the people.